Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and we're going to be doing some more deck techs for the new set, Kaldime, uh, for Standard. Uh, as I mentioned in the other videos, I am participating in the Early Access Streamer event uh, this upcoming Wednesday, January the 27th. Uh, myself and other fellow streamers will have uh, early access to the set a day before the general public. Uh, and we get to demo out a bunch of the new cards in best of one matches. Uh, so this deck, as well as the other ones, uh, will all be best of one format. Um, it, this deck, uh, which is an Orzhov Angels and Clerics tribal deck, uh, as well as many others, are up on my Aether Hub page. Uh, so you can check it out there. Everything that we play at early streamer event will be put onto my YouTube afterwards, the full gameplay videos, um, and then kind of a summary at the end of each video as to what I think of the decks. But these are just brews we want to test them out for the time being. As always, before we jump into the deck itself, if you can, like, comment, and subscribe if you're catching this on YouTube. Uh, and you want to, if you want to know when we go live on Twitch, you can always drop a follow there. They're all free ways to help support the channel. So now, what we got here, it is a black-white Orzhov. Uh, Clerics tribal with an angel tribal sub theme kind of an aggressive recursive deck um, Pretty sweet. I'm excited for this. We got some new uh, Really powerful white cards finally uh, that can fill in some of the missing spots. I think clerics lacked um, and just jumping into it Two of the new cards that we got righteous valkyrie a three mana two four flying angel uh, Cleric as well. So it meets both the conditions there so whenever another angel or cleric enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. Uh, so a way to kind of gain life uh, a la Soul Warden style effect. Um, and then as long as you have seven or more life uh, from your starting life total, so if you're at 27 or more life, uh, Righteous Valkyrie serves as an anthem for all your creatures, giving them plus two, two. So all your weenies get buffed. Um, so this is pairs really well with like another card that cares about seven or more life and speaker of the heavens which we have here another four of that makes angels when you have 27 or more life so the speaker makes angels which then gains you four life which with valkyrie which keeps you above that 27 uh, point life total which then makes your angels really six sixes so then you gain some more life it's a whole kind of uh, synergy or uh, loose combo if you may um, moving into a new, another new angel. Uh, this is a three mana, uh, three three, uh, resplendent marshal. Uh, so this one's not a cleric. It's the only non-cleric in the deck. Um, but resplendent angel is kind of an honorary, or resplendent marshal is an honorary a uh, cleric. So when it enters the battlefield or dies, you may exile another creature card from your graveyard. Uh, when you do, you put a one one counter on each creature you control other than Resplendent uh, Marshal that shares a creature type with the exiled creature. With every other creature in our deck being a cleric, we exile a cleric from our graveyard, and then all our creatures get plus one one, which is a permanent kind of boost to our creatures. So kind of a cool synergy there as well. Um, as I mentioned, the Speaker of Heavens, and then we have Archfiend's Vessel to fill in our, two, our one drop slot. Uh, so this is a pretty innocuous one mana, one one life linker, but when it comes back from the graveyard, you exile it and it becomes a five five demon. Uh, we, like I mentioned, we do have ways to get stuff back from the graveyard, which we'll uh, get to in future slides. Um, then we have, we're filling in the curves with our clerics, Luminarch Aspirant, very powerful two mana uh, white creature. At the beginning of your combat, you get to put one one counter on another target creature. Um, this allows you to kind of grow your team. You can put it on a life linker that get, helps you get your life above that 27 threshold. Um, then you have Aura Skyclave Hierophant. Uh, we're playing three of these. It's a four mana, three, three lifelinker. When it or another cleric you controls dies, you get to return a cleric from your graveyard with lesser CMC, uh, converted mana cost. So this is a way to get back the um, your smaller clerics. You can make it a demon with the aspirant, uh, or the vessel, sorry. Um, and there's like kind of ways to have your creature, like it's insulation for a board wipe. So with that new foretell wrath, if they wipe your board and you have aura back, you get back a bunch of creatures. And because all the creatures go to the graveyard at the same time, then Aura's trigger stacks, so then you can get creatures back. Um, we have Cleric of Life's Bond. This is a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two, that whenever another Cleric enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life. And then whenever you gain life for the first time each turn, um, you put a 1-1 one -one counter on the Cleric. So this can kind of be your a Johnny's Pride Mate kind of big, dumb beater uh, that also helps you gain life. And then finally... Another white card that they came out with in Kaldheim, Rally the Ranks. 
This is a two mana anthem effect. You, when it enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type. In our case, we're gonna be choosing clerics and all our clerics have plus one one. So everything just kind of statically becomes larger when it enters the battlefield, which if you have the angel out means you gain more life and it's just a whole kind of nice package that flows together. Um, coming in as well, we have, so this is my flex spot. I wanna try out Maul of the Skyclaves first. I played some auras, in, or sorry, some clerics in Zendikar, and I found you made really big creatures, but they got chump blocked. So you want the evasion from flying. So that's where we're gonna put the Maul of the Skyclaves in. It's an auto-equipped uh, equipment um, that gives your creature plus two, two flying and first strike to allow you. So if you make like a really big uh, aspirant or any of your creatures really large, you're able to fly over and get those points of damage through. Um, when I posted this on Instagram, uh, a lot of people were questioning like Tabarax. Um, Tabarax is only a two toughness when it enters. It can die to Bone Crusher, dies to most of the removal. It can draw you some cards, but it's kind of weak when your other cards are just inherently stronger. So I prefer that. I'd probably try between like Maul, Heliod, uh, because you have the life gain synergy to put more counters on things, or just Call of the Death Dwellers is another way to bring stuff back. So I'm going to try out the Maul first, and then I'll kind of cycle between Heliod and Call of the Death Dwellers. One other card, you can even try like um, Luminous Broodmoth or one of Erebos, just as when creatures die, you can pay life and then get them back to your hand. So there's kind of some synergies there. Um, so this is kind of the flex spot for now. Um, in terms of removal for the deck, um, in an unknown meta, uh, I kind of set up with Blood Chief's Thirst and Heartless Act. Heartless Act might be better served as Eliminate if you notice a lot of counter synergies. Um, but I like Blood Chief's Thirst just from its flexibility to hit Planeswalkers and creatures. It's early removal for smaller creatures, late removal for bigger permanents as well. And then uh, our land base, we're playing a couple of the modular lands. We're playing Egadine's Awakening, which allows us to return creatures from our graveyard, another way to get stuff back. Uh, if everything dies, you could just bring it back to the, your uh, battlefield. So we're playing two of those, and then we're playing, oops, apologies, Amiria's Cult. Um, so Miria's Call is just make some angels, kind of a top end if we flood out. Um, so we're playing four of the pathways, and then we're playing some castles as well. Uh, Lock Wayne to give us card draw. We have a number of ways to gain life, so we can use our life as a resource when we are um, late in the game. Castle Arden Vale to make tokens as well. They're humans, so they don't synergize necessarily with our kind of creature sub-theme, but... In a late game, you can keep pumping it out. If you flood, you just have ways to keep pressuring your opponent. And then finally, we have Fabled Passages. Uh, we're an aggressive deck, so I'd rather the Fabled Passages over the Temples, uh, just to always pretty much have untapped lands. Uh, and then we're playing five planes, five swamps. Uh, not Snow Cover, you can play Snow Cover. There's not really much synergy with the snow theme in this particular deck, um, so I've opted to just go regular planes there. And then just kind of demoing like with the mana curve and the breakdown. So it's mostly base white and our curve's pretty aggressively slanted, which I do like for these types of decks. I do think Clerics needs to be more of an aggressive deck, um, but it does have the longevity to go long because you have so many recursive themes. Um, the bulk of our curve is one, two, three mana um, with just the auras coming in the four slot and the one Amirius call as a seven drop, which is more of a flexible option. Um, so that's pretty much the deck. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. If you do have any decks yourselves that you're brewing up, do feel free to drop the links into the YouTube comments. I'll be going through selecting some at random and playing them during the early access event. So if you want your deck featured, do drop a comment there. And if you do have any suggestions for any other decks, um, I'll probably just do some more like briefer uh, deck techs where I just have like kind of a list and explain it. Um, while I do like these visual representations, they do take quite a bit of time to put together. Um, and just with the deadline coming for the new set to drop, I want to get a, as many decks out to you as possible. So we'll probably go with that content. But uh, if you do have any suggestions, do let me know. And if you want to see some more decks, I have a bunch on my Aether Hub already. I think I have 11 or 12. And I'll continually put more up there as we go along. Otherwise, I hope to see you on Wednesday during the Early Access event. And if you do miss it for whatever reason, as I mentioned, you can catch everything on my YouTube channel. Appreciate you all stopping by today. Uh, stay safe out there and uh, have fun playing Kaldheim. Thanks for watching.